Today we're going to talk about the top five upgrades for your MP5, MP5 clone, AP5, whatever it might be, and who better to talk about that than Adam with Century Arms. Dude, it's always so good to see you, man. Good to see you, brother. How you been? Oh, I've been really well, and I'm going to be very great talking about cut, these cut, upgrades. Cut, cut. Let, let me guess, he's not even in frame, is he? He is the frame. <laughs> you know what? Stand by, please. Uh, we're going to fix Adam real quick. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, and yes, we do have Adam back with us. Dude, it's always so good to see you. Man, man you know what, good to be seen. Yeah, and actually completely in frame. We are good, right Ryan? Oh, we're good. Okay. All right, cool. And yes, we have uh, quite a few different AP5 models out here, even the HK SP5, because well, we wanted to talk about your top five upgrades for your MP5. I'm putting that in quotations because there's uh, there's PTR, there's obviously Sentry with the AP5 and uh, importing the MKEs. Correct. Uh, this is my personal one that we'll talk about. We've got Ryan's behind the camera, his HK SP5. We've got a couple of yours over here. And we really just kind of wanted to hit muzzle to brace or stock if you choose the SBR, uh, and just talk about some of these upgrades. Uh, and you guys offer some pretty cool things. Yeah, also. absolutely. So the gun yeah. obviously comes with a number of different options. You right. can do a very base model like we just mentioned. It's got that you know old iconic triangle hand guard. Right. You know, it comes with a Picatinny rail, a couple mags, a hard mm -hmm. case. But a lot of people obviously want to be able to utilize the full performance of this, right. this platform. And that really does come from when you're shouldering this gun. Yes. You know, and so what, what we want to be able to do is talk today, like you said, about what are the kind of things that you can really make this car turn into a race car. Yeah, you know what I mean? right, absolutely. And just gonna go ahead and uh, start it off here. I'm just gonna go ahead and say muzzle device. And that thing is so quiet and well, so smooth. That's quiet. I would actually prefer some peace and quiet. Thank you very much. All right. Can I ask you a question though? Yes, yeah, sure. Do you want to be in gun jail for six months waiting on that thing? Uh, worth it, especially if I don't have to wear ear pro if I don't want to. But I mean, the OG flash hider, you gotta admit, is still pretty sexy. It is, it looks really cool, but it's not a silencer. I mean, I'm not gonna argue on that, but yep. once again, showing off. That's, that's absolutely me, yes. Shocker. <laughs> uh, because first of all, on a lot of your guns, you have the included, uh, the, um, Trilug adapted flash hider. Right. Which is a cool thing because if you guys have never utilized the Trilug anything for your MP5, again, I'm just putting that in quotations because I understand it's not real MP5s, so it doesn't go grrr, but whatever. Uh, it's actually pretty sweet. It is. But one thing that I think is really cool that a lot of the, you know, HKs and everything else, and of course the AP5s feature is the fact that you do have the half by 28 thread pitch still on there. So if you wanted to do something like this Huxworks, the, uh, what is the Cash 9 that I have right here, which is a fantastic silencer, uh, you can do that as well. So number five, a muzzle device. It's really not all that necessary uh, because first of all, this is already a soft recoiling nine millimeter gun anyway. The roller delayed action in this gun is just fantastic. And I've got, uh, I've got a lot of rounds through here that I haven't cleaned. Uh, and it still just keeps running a lot of suppressed rounds on top of that. You were telling me how many rounds do you have through? 15,000 through my full size AP5 with the original components that I started with when I got it out of the box. Extractor and all that stuff. Extractor, there. everything, firing pin, yeah, everything. Which is absolutely astronomical. I mean, we yeah. don't expect that on a roller delay blowback gun. Right. And that's not a knock on anybody's product. Yeah. It's just these guns are known about 5,000 rounds to start to see that wear and tear where you gotta actually do some maintenance to it just to make sure it's mm -hmm. running at the level you want it to. Right, and on top of that, you're running, I see you run steel case quite often. Yeah, so obviously Century Arms has Red Army Standard, which right. is, you know, as ammo prices got absolutely insane, oh, yes. you know, sometimes all of a sudden ammo is more expensive than the gun. Right. Um, we had to make sure that we could always supply ammo, and a lot of that was steel. So it ran so well, which we've seen issues with in mm -hmm. you know previous designs of these kind of guns. Right. We said, let's just see what it can do. So yeah. 15,000 rounds of primarily steel case through this thing, and it's running like a scalded dog. Dude, that's impressive, man. So 15,000 rounds to one of your guns. I've probably only got maybe about two or 3,000 through this now. And get those numbers up. Yeah, Come I'll, on, man. Dude, I'll get there, all right. <laughs> it's not like my ammo's, oh, well. Uh, but anyway, that was, that was rude, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so a muzzle device. Now, moving back a little bit further, by the way, you know what? I think a lot of people are probably like, okay, that's cool, but can we see it shoot? So we should, we should, we should try out some of these accessories as we're talking about. Yeah, them. I mean, I'm I'm new to this whole classic in the room, but I mean, is this where you like 
cut to something? Yeah, let's cut to the range. <laughs> simple, sexy, smooth. Yeah, you got your simple, sexy, smooth, but look at all of the gizmos and gadgets. That's what everybody needs, man. You gotta have, you gotta have the high fly, sexy stuff. Does, does, is there an attachment that lets you know how many rounds are still in your gun? Uh, don't need that because the mags tell me. So, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mine yeah. just puts my my nice big meat paw right here. Yeah. Looks cool. It does. It's look got cool. the built-in hand start, hand stop. Yeah. And you know what? I'm still shooting. Yeah, you can still shoot, but are you gonna be able to see your target when the lights go? <laughs> are you out? gonna see the guy that's still shooting at you when you ran out of ammo? All right. So now continuing on. Let's talk about a little bit further back the rail because like what you were talking about the standard polymer handguard works great I've shot that plenty of times it keeps the heat down it does everything you need to do to protect the barrel and your hand yeah uh, but on top of that you guys are also offering um, a one package that has the Magpul M lock for in correct right so we have the Magpul and and the thing about the Magpul is there's a number of different sizes available yeah. um, you have obviously for the AP5P and the AP5M you have a stubby version with a little tail hook on the front to keep you yep. know keep your hand where it needs to be yeah um, and but the reality is is that you a lot of people want to do some aftermarket stuff to them as you can see there everything from a light yeah. to a pressure pad right. to you know a slanted foregrip and you need those ability to adapt so right. you know the, whether it's key mod or M-lock mm. whatever you want to do you need to be able to do that and that comes with a new handguard so we are offering a version that will have Magpul yeah. um, and then we're gonna have obviously the base and let the people make the decision uh, where they want to go and the nice yeah. thing about it is if it works for an mp5 it works for the ap5 because yeah. the reality of this is, is even though it's significantly cheaper in terms of the price right. the quality and the affordability of it does not take away the, from the fact that it is on the original technical data package mm -hmm. original machinery original metallurgy yeah. everything on this gun is the original design of the original mp5 yeah. and so you know you're going to have the compatibility and the durability that goes with this gun just at a significantly more affordable price point which is awesome and we've got too just to show off a little bit different types of models that will work. Again, we've got the Knight's Rail here, which by the way, we've given away a couple of these now with the Knight's Rail on there. We didn't realize how sought after these things are gonna be. So if you'd like to return that, <laughs> Just kidding, it's yours, uh, we're not gonna do that to you. But I do like the idea of an added type of rail because like you were talking about here, uh, running a light, and as you can see on Ryan's build, we've got the Surefire Scout Mini, we've got the pressure pad here on the side that works really, really well. And then integrating into the rail also comes the optics mount, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. But they've got the Knight's Rail on that one, Magpul on here, your standard right up there on, uh, that is the P, correct? Correct, the AP5P. Yeah. And then we've got actually something super slim, this is B&T's rail. Uh, which I am a huge fan of. It's nice and slim. Uh, I like the Knights. It has that traditional old school look and everything, but this is a little bit lighter, nowhere near as bulky. And it allows you, of course, this is all Picatinny, unlike the M-Lock on the Magpul one, so that's what you're more into. By the way, the ergonomics on the Magpul one, significantly more affordable, feels great. And the fact that you guys are offering it as a package. Great. Right, and I think that's what's amazing is, you know, for so long the MP5 platform was something that was, take it how it is, yeah, and that's it. Yeah. You know, I mean, unless yeah. you, I mean, you remember in the originals they were taping mag oh, mag, oh, mag oh, lights to the top. Oh, you so, know, so HK had an actual mount for the mag light on top, and we right. all remember the Iran, the Iranian uh, embassy hostage situation, right. and the SAS going in there, and they had these lights. You see Margaret Thatcher over there, like with one of the guys, and it's like, what is that? Right, and that's called advancement of technology, uh, because now we've taken that mag light and put it. Right here. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's amazing to say that just when we're talking handguards, you've got four options right yes. here. Yeah. And, and some of them are more expensive than others, like we mentioned, right. but they're all attainable, yes. and they're all something that now you can truly customize yeah. a roller delay blowback firearm, which I think oh, is yeah. so exciting, and do it at a price, once again, that the average man can afford. Yeah, absolutely. So like uh, Ryan's HK on my AP5, I do have the Surefire Scout Mini right up here. I'm running my pressure pad on the left-hand side of the gun. That's just been a little bit more comfortable for me with the angled foregrip, and I run the cable through the angled foregrip just to keep that from getting tangled and stuff like that, and it works out really well for me. That's sharp. Dude, I like it. Now, continuing on, Moving back a little bit further. So we've covered five, four, now let's talk about three here, optics and optic mounts, because we've also got um, different optic mounts as well. Mm. All right, I'll give it to you. That's got a pretty sweet mount, nice and slick, but I mean, just look at that claw mount, dude. I mean, it's a... 
Question, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I got you on this one. Okay. In the middle of shooting. Yeah. Your battery's dead. Yeah. Keep so. going. That was a lot of, that was like $11 in ammo. Not yep. one hit. Watch yeah. this. Yeah. Battery's dead. Oh, probably should take it off safety. Look at that. Hmm. You know why? Look, dude. 100% co-witness. The, the fact that it co-witnesses is actually super cool. All right. Point to Adam on this one. Uh, let's just go ahead and start with this because this one is actually the one that's impressing me the most. Well, Minimalist I, and co-witnessing. Well, yeah. well, you know, without taking over your show, I think yeah. we should start on what is the base base oh. model. So the base model, MKE, go for it. MKE actually designs a pick rail yeah. that comes standard with a lot of our models. Yeah. So we have some different models in it. We have a base model that has some of the extras stripped away and then obviously the price is reflected of that. Yeah. But a lot of our core models actually have a pick rail that comes that mounts right to the direct to the top of the gun um, that then allows you yeah. to put a multitude of different optics on it being the length of the pick rail. Right. Um, so that's a really cool option that comes in a lot of our guns and then gives you you know, a very verse uh, choice pattern for your optic. And then we said, well, look at this. It's got this little clamp point right here that's yeah. really neat. And what we did is Shield actually designed a clamp mm -hmm. and optic that it'll actually take any of the RMR pattern, the shield pattern yeah. optics and loud, but this one obviously came with the shield yeah. and the shield clamp that we actually sell as a model. And it, it's really neat. It actually, not only does it clamp to the top of the gun, it holds very, very tight yeah. uh, to the point where some people even think it's locked tight. It, you gotta get a little aggressive with a hammer to get it off. Yeah. But that's the point because it's holding zero so yeah. well and sit so low yes. that as soon as you picked it up you notice it yeah co-witnesses yes because which is uh, which is huge i mean yes. where you know we look at all these things while they're great and they may even yours sits a little low yeah it's still too high to yeah. be able to actually have that co-witness feature and still depend on your iron sights if you needed them yeah there's nothing qd unfortunately about what we've got going on here unless the eotech that you attach to on your pick rail or optics mount is a qd option uh, but no, so even though I'm running the Trigicon RMR with the BNT mount right here, as you can see pretty much naturally where this is sitting is I'm, I'm looking at the butt of the mount right? Uh, and not through the actual optics. So the fact that you can get a co-witness on that is very impressive to me. And you see how minimalist that mount is compared to the different ones that clamp in all four positions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is just super cool. Now, granted, I love my RMRs. They always work really, really well for me. And, uh, you know, if all else fails, you know, just, you know, spray and pray. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. But uh, anyway, optics, optics mounts. We've also, as I talked about before, Knight's Armament has on this one. This is something also that has become sought after uh, with the pick rail integrated right up here. EOTech, the EXPS2 really, really fits well on, this is a three. The XPS3 fits really, really well on this mount. And I think it's just a good look too. Granted, it depends on the style you want to go with. And what we're showing you guys here too is just actually how modular this system has become. Since, you know, several decades ago, like we were already talking about with the Maglite mount uh, sitting on top of this thing, having something now that can be a little bit more compact, have different types of optics that you want to run, co-witnessing if you want to, uh, grips if you want, so on and so forth, I think is pretty awesome. What optic is it that you're running on this and is that gonna be offered in the package as well? So this one is, you know, we wanted to have something that we knew was reliable, yeah. but also had a price point, like we said, that kept it in that range that nobody's yeah. getting priced out of buying. Something that for a lot of us, including you and myself, yeah. is a dream gun. Yes. This is a dream gun. I mean, yeah. now I have a machine gun. You know what I mean? We were literally, I said that yes. earlier, we all just started dying. Yeah. This one is actually one of our ride, the ride on optic. And yeah. what we're doing with this is, you know, this is something that they have time and time again, we've been partnering them for a mm -hmm. while, proven that they actually have a durable optic. Yeah. And we will be offering through amazing partners like Classic, yeah. we'll be offering a ride on optic ready package that'll come with the pick rail, uh, the mags the you know the in cap the threaded the thread protector everything that you want the tri lug adapter everything that's here uh at a great price yeah so like adam is saying classicfarms.com is where you can go to go ahead and check out all of your ap5 once needs and everything else that falls under the second amendment including well, other firearms ammunition to run and gun so uh check that out and let's go ahead and continue on to our next yeah, accessory. we got to talk about this because mm -hmm. I think at some point we're going to have to do a little, a little cutaway again back to the range. Yeah. You're talking triggers and uh, you kind of you kind of sandbagged a little in our competition. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that? That's the uh, Franklin Army binary trigger. Wait a minute. We, 
We didn't discuss it. That's something you need to let me know ahead of time. Yeah, it took you a little while to get a couple of shots on target. That was kind of cute. All right, we're going to talk triggers. <laughs> Let's talk triggers. <laughs> and you didn't tell me. And then all of a sudden, I knew you were good, but nobody's yeah. that good without, you know, baby Jesus or <laughs> some mods. And... Well, let's just say Franklin Armory does make a solution out there to help increase your double tap speeds, I guess you can call it. And uh, yes, it does. Mine has the binary trigger in it. And as you can see here, it does have three positions. I also upgraded my safety, which I think we can consider that part of this, this attachment area. Absolutely. I think we know that there's some of these... Uh, points of this gun that are, are one, it's a wonderful gun, yeah. but the trigger pull leaves a little to be desired yeah. on a base model on yeah. AP5s, MP5s, SP5s, all of them. And then even that safety, that safety can be tough to manipulate a yeah. couple times. So I think it's a fair to say, you know, kind of where that finger lays, Right. It's all one big conglomerate. Yep. And as you guys can see here, it gets close. So this is um uh, so this is a aftermarket safety that I added a metal one here, uh, HK parts. So again, that we've included stuff like this before on previous giveaways that you guys have seen. But I'll just go ahead and show this off for semi-auto. Fantastic trigger. I'm just going to go ahead and actually switch to this arm so you guys can see this exactly in this nice trigger pull that we get because it's a steady squeeze and then that drops from Franklin and then let it reset. Boom, nice short reset. Now we go ahead and drop that into that third position. Now what you're gonna notice is we're gonna go ahead and get that hammer being sent and then hammer being sent again. With that short reset, I guess you can call it a reset. With that short let off, I guess you could say. Take up, next, whatever you yeah, wanna do. Whatever you wanna call it. It does make it a lot of fun to get those quick little double taps and whatnot. So yes, upgrading your trigger is something that I would recommend. And while we're taking a look at the grip module here too, um, honorable mention before we get to like our number one, you can actually switch out these grip modules. Uh, this is not the firearm, which is a pretty interesting thing. So if you, they make the uh, metal modules that Magpul fit. has one. Yes. Magpul has one. They also have a, a safety selector yep. um, that's a little wider, is a little more manip easily manipulated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. And there's a ton of them. Even if you, you and I noticed this on the SP5, yeah. you notice they've actually got a very sleek, mm -hmm. um, you know, very less. Um, what would you say, molded yeah. version of, mm. of the grip and trigger guard. Whereas on the AP5, we notice you got these these concave yeah. front of it that really fits into the trigger as right. well right. as, you know, the thumb right, right there, which is it's interesting. And you know, there's different preferences for different folks. I've got big hands, and you yeah. do, I mean, but it fits well. I mean, it really does. And I just feel when you have this, this texturing, yeah. you know, sometimes it can get a little slippery and things like right. that uh, to me having that extra uh, contact points is yeah. something that I'm a big fan of. So it's definitely an ergonomic grip. And on top of that, we were just kind of noticing a little bit of the different designs in this, because uh, what you're saying is when they switched from the MP5 to the SP5, uh, they made not so much upgrades, but probably things just to expedite manufacturing. Yeah, and I, and I yeah. can't speak to exactly what they did, but you yeah. can definitely see where things have changed. And if you're using it just from a whatever industry knowledge you have, which yeah. could be dangerous when people like you and I assume. <laughs> right. I mean, you look at some of that stuff and it says, you know, for speed and efficiency, it probably some of these decisions were made. Yeah, but at the end of the day, we still know we're making, we're getting two very quality guns. It just it all depends at the end of the day, which one fits more your style and speed. Cause you'll notice like we've got the front takedown pin up here. We've got the cuts that are kind of true to the original design and overall just a really good fit and finish on the AP5. And this is just a lot more sleek, simple design that HK's got going on with it. So as far as the comparison goes, again, like you're saying, HK tooling, machinery, things like that coming out Six of the Six and one, half a dozen into yeah. the other. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty interesting stuff. So now moving on, we're gonna go ahead and talk about probably one of the more important parts, the brace. Yeah, all right, you got a brace, I got a brace. That, that checks out. I mean, yeah, it just makes the platform that much better. But you know what? Yeah. The platform is fun like that, but it's still fun, I mean. I mean, just going a little bit of, ho, 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 I have a machine gun. Yeah. I think we hit once. Good enough. <laughs> Even though these guns are as soft shooting as they are, having that third point of contact, that additional point of contact, is a very nice thing to have. 
and I personally love SB Tactical's braces, but we've got uh, the same brace on the HK over here. Again, just to go to show that these parts are completely interchangeable. I can take this module, throw it on this gun, and I can mm -hmm. do this and that, and it's all gonna work, uh, which is pretty cool. We got an SB Tactical over here as well. Yes. So, and this is an interesting one, obviously. It is, of course, side, the side folder, folder option. Right. Um, and this is an option that, uh, that will be available in our full size as well as our P's and M's um, as one of the models available through Classic Firearms. Right. So really excited, like you said, that third contact point is very crucial. Um, transitioning targets, you know, getting that accuracy yeah. on longer targets, that's what a brace is designed to do. Yeah. And then obviously if you choose to SBR your, your, your platform as well, mm -hmm. then you've got something that's even more of a steady, yes. reliable contact point. Yeah. Um, and like you said, we saved the best for last. In my mm -hmm. opinion, that is one of the most crucial elements of truly taking your roller delay blowback firearm, your AP5 to the next yeah. level. So a lot of good information, and you mentioned before too, on the compact boys over here, we have a P and an M. What is the difference between the two? That's a great question, and it's yeah. a common misconception right now right. as we've kind of changed, like you said, the designations. Um, yes. There's obvious reasons why we've changed the designations, and we want to really take the time to clarify. Yes. So they're both obviously that shorter, Platform, shorter style platform. The only difference yeah. between the two is right here. You have that threaded barrel okay. on the P. Right. So on the M, you're just sacrificing the threaded barrel with obviously it has the option of the tri lug right. and then the one half by 28, you know, the thread protector right. and the flash for about a half an inch, difference. a yeah. half an inch of, of difference in length. And to somebody like you and me, we might say, well, what's the point of that? Right. Well, there are some really good reasons. One, the suitcase gun. Yes. You know, which yeah. is just like, <laughs> which, is, a super which cool. is just a really, yeah. really cool yes. option. If you guys haven't seen that, just type in MP5 suitcase gun and you'll, you'll it, we'll think this later, yeah. yeah and it. then you're gonna want a suitcase gun. Yeah, so, right, exactly. But for a more realistic and everyday purpose, there yeah. are some states yeah. and areas that do not allow you to have a threaded barrel. Mm -hmm. With that being said, we know the full size AP5 and the AP5P yeah. offer that because that is something we wanna be able to offer to all our consumers, right. but we don't wanna disinclude yeah. everybody that has the desire to own something as cool as this just because where they live doesn't allow it. Right. So that's where the AP5M comes in handy and it's available now through you guys and you can get more information both on your site as well as centuryarms.com. Absolutely, dude. So I think we've covered quite a bit. Uh, one other thing I can throw out there, a good single point sling. This was made for a single point sling and that's, you know, that's all there is to it. Okay, so maybe a little bit more than a couple, like five accessories, but it's hard not to talk about all the different things you can throw on if we're talking about the rail section, optics, optics, mounts, even different types of triggers, because they even make precision triggers, because it'll take like uh, G3 components and things like that too, which is pretty neat. Uh, so, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff out there that you can find that are aftermarket HK that will fit in your AP5 because it's pretty much the same thing. So there's that. Anyway, oh, and magazines. I actually. was gonna say magazines. Yeah, once yeah. you start shooting this gun, yeah. you don't want to stop. No. And no. the reality is you can go through a 30 round mag Easy. really, Especially with that really quick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, next we noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, but yeah, but one thing that's different too is what you were telling me is there is a difference between the MKE mags and the made in Germany mags. Yeah. So again, not speaking directly to their reasoning behind yeah. things or their strategy or even ultimately their engineering. Yeah. Um, it is common knowledge that an HK mag is blue. Yes. And you know, obviously the MKE mags are done on the original, um, which allow for a little bit more durability in terms of the testing we've seen um, because of the way, the way they're made. Gotcha, and they're, and they're parkerized? Over, correct, over correct, yeah, yeah, so. Okay, well, hey, that's something I've noticed and I was like, okay, that's a little bit different. And both work pretty well for me, but I have noticed that, if I'm being completely blunt, uh, my MKE mags don't rust <laughs> like my, my HK mags, which is kind of funny. I think that is coming down to the bluing and the parkerization. Let me know if you guys have had that issue personally to prevent that. I just rub it down and ballast all and call it a day. Uh, but it does get a little slippery if you're trying to go for quick mag changes. So keep that in mind, all right? For storage, great. Uh, but anyway, this has been a fun one, dude. Of course, I love getting out to the range with you and shooting and talking some old school, cool, timeless classics like MP5s, AP5s, and the different variants that you guys offer that, of course, again, you can find at 
classicfirearms.com. And while you're there checking out all of your AP5 wants and needs, make sure you get signed up for our current giveaway because, well, at Classic, we like to give away a lot of guns. Recently, actually, we gave away uh, the Century Arms uh, Thunder Ranch Vishka, and we, fl and, we and, you, and we partnered on this, partnered with Thunder Ranch. You guys flew the winner out and had such a great time with him. His name was Ben. We had such an awesome time with uh, Ava and of course, Clint Smith at Thunder Ranch. And an icon, else. an icon in this industry. Dude, it was phenomenal. And the time that you guys got with us too, to do some one-on-one -on -one conversation and everything, picking that man's brain is like, I want to go back and re replay that, rewatch that because sometimes I just, he says one thing and I'm like, oh my God. And he says another, and I'm like, oh my God, what did he just say? Cause he just says, he's got so much information and so much experience that I'm glad we got it on video. You know. With that being said, maybe we should find another iconic individual in this industry to top roller delay blowback firearms. You know, that sounds like a pretty good idea. That sounds like a pretty good idea. So make sure you guys are subscribed to our CF Podcast YouTube channel as well, because I think you're going to be seeing somebody that is a legend there very, very soon. So last time, ClassicFarms.com to check out all of your Century Arms wants and needs and get in on our current giveaway, because who doesn't want a free gun? Like I said, we've teamed up with these guys and also did some training, which I... I think we should do that again, I'm just saying. Uh, but uh, I'll leave it off there. Utilize the code word you see at the bottom of the screen right now to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. As always, we appreciate you, you and your business. God bless. We'll see you soon at classicfarms.com. And Adam, thanks again, man. Thanks for having me, brother. Absolutely.